Good evening, folks. Um, I think we are going to get started mainly because I need to go home at some point today. Um, it's been a long day, but really excited to just um, have this opportunity to talk with neighbors and community members again. So thank you all for coming out tonight. I'm sorry that this came together really at the last minute, but we wanted to take advantage of the opportunity um, to introduce folks to our new interim president, Andrew Ramsamy. So we're going to start out tonight. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Andrew and let him have the mic for a bit. Um, and then I'll give an update on the campus. And then we have a really exciting item to, to wrap up with. So um, I'm going to read you Andrew's bio. Um, so Andrew is a multi, uh, multiple Emmy winning, award winning, sorry, it's been a long day. He is a multiple Emmy award winner with more than 25 years of global experience in creative content and production, and has committed much of his career to expanding diversity, equity, and inclusion within the field of journalism. Mr. Ramsamy most recently served as a local media association's chief impact officer, where he led Word in Black, a groundbreaking digital collaboration of the nation's leading black news publishers and the Knight and Bloom Lab, a sustainability initiative in support of a free and independent black press. He is a graduate of uh, New York City's LaGuardia High School and a film graduate of the School of Visual Arts. And he is also the winner of the 2022 Salzberger Fellow at the Columbia Journalism School. Um, Andrew came to us by way of our board. He was a board member um, before he received the call to step in to the interim president role. Um, and I will say it's just been a pleasure to work with him and uh, help shepherd the college into this next phase um, of our life. So with no further ado, I'd love to have Andrew come up and just give a, a chat about the state of the college. Thank you, everyone, uh, for coming out this evening. I know, uh, you know, uh, it means a lot when you take time out of your busy schedules to come and talk about the future of VCFA. And, um, you know, having been a, a board member since 2021, you know, I know the news of, about the school and, and the school deciding to, you know, sell its campus was a very hard uh, you know, a hard story and, and hard news to hear. So um, I really want to make myself available and accessible to as many of you as possible to talk about the future of our school. Um, and, you know, while, you know, the decision to move forward was, was something that we continue to do, and I will update you in terms of where that is headed, you know, the real important thing for me and what I've seen, and, you know, since I became a board member and I told Katie this, you know, the very first board meeting that we were supposed to attend uh, was supposed to be in person and Omicron hit and there was a COVID outbreak, um, which forced us to all go virtual. And in that process, uh, I was literally sitting in my hotel room, uh, you know, down here in downtown uh, at the Hilton. And I said to Katie, I said, Katie, I really have to see the buildings. I can't as a board member. Uh, tell folks that it's time to sell and not see what these buildings were all about. Um, so Katie gave me a tour. Uh, we came down here by ourselves and she, she gave me a tour of the entire campus and pointed out all the buildings and shared with me her own personal stories of having literally grown up on this campus, having danced on this stage. Um, and clearly, you know, I got a very strong sense about the, the sense of place uh, and why the sense of place is so important to this community. Um, and when we initially made the decision and when we initially discussed selling this campus, you know, board members who had attended VCFA obviously had a very strong connection and desire to these facilities and to these spaces. But it became very clear that after doing an assessment and looking at the actual use of this campus, which based on our low residency model, pretty much sat uh, empty close to 60% of the time, if not more, and also the age of these buildings, while beautiful and majestic, uh, just they were adding up in terms of, for all of you that are homeowners, you know this term, deferred maintenance. Um, 
it was millions and millions of dollars of work that needed to really uh, happen. Um, we were all in the middle of the pandemic, so also there was that also added level of uncertainty. Um, and we heard from students more and more, while yes, going to a place is important, also access uh, in a hybrid model is also equally as important. So, uh, you know, it was a decision that wasn't made lightly. Um, our board chair, Mike Goldstein, likes to say that we arrived at the decision unanimously. I don't like the word unanimous because it kind of think it kind of sounds as if like it's like a fait accompli. Uh, it was really more of a decision around a consensus. So when my goal has been since taking on the role of interim president is to truly build consensus with all of our constituents, our students, our faculty, our alumni, um, our staff, and our in our community. So um, that to me is why we're here tonight is to really talk about about that what the next steps are. You might have seen a seven days article that just came out talking about uh, VCFA and its future. I want to just go on record by saying that I believe the headline is completely misleading. Uh, we're not looking for a buyer. I never use the word buyer. Uh, I've worked in journalism and corporate communications all my life, and I'm very intentional with the words that I use. So the word that I use was partner. And the reason why VCFA is seeking a partner um, is that Quite honestly, no one is in the. No one is really looking to buy a college. Has anyone heard of any really good colleges that have gone on for sale and have done really well? Not a lot. Um, we want VCFA to continue to maintain its identity, its pedagogy, uh, its mission, uh, to keep as much of of our faculty and our our constituents and our students uh, as together as possible. But as someone who has worked in journalism now for for several years. One of the things that we all look about and look at in terms of what are the ways in which we can save money uh, is looking at what's called back-end infrastructure services, right? So it's the, the stuff that powers the car, it's the engine that drives all of this. And in doing so, what you begin to do is to identify what, are, what would be redundancies if there was a merger or a connection of things that were brought together. So in doing that, uh, you know, what, what that really has led to is in our discussions with partnerships is about the, the future of the staff that works out in this building, as well as our staff that is spread across the United States. You know, what are those services that unfortunately in a, in a new model uh, become redundant? And the reason why we were talking about this is that the, the challenges of running a college today, a modern college, uh, the infrastructure support services that are needed, everything from, you know, the bursar to, you know, uh, student records to, uh, what students require, health services, I mean, all the needs that students require today is the greatest that it is, has ever been. So a small college like ours really struggles to continue to provide those services. And then on top of that, all the technology things that, that we think about that we all take for granted in perhaps our jobs at work, but imagine a school trying to deliver that consistently across the board. So um, we're taking great care to ensure that uh, as we move down this path of a partnership, that we're thinking about our staff. We are placing ourselves in a financial position to be able to make sure that when we do identify staff that are gonna be impacted by this, and this is a discussion that we've already had with staff, so this is not like they're hearing this for the first time. Uh, this is not breaking news to them, but certainly probably to you, um, that obviously we will offer them severance. But in order to continue to do that, uh, we need to place VCFA in a financial position that allows us to be able to do that, and that is the continuation of the sales of our campus assets. So when this school was first acquired, um, it was acquired uh, with millions of millions of million dollars millions of dollars in loans. And uh, every year those loans needed to be paid. And so there was a debt service that was required to do that in addition to the service that is required to maintain these buildings. So again, when you add all those things up, um, you know, most schools today that even as they try to make a transition or they try to merge or they try to be acquired, or even if they try to partner, they have millions of dollars of debt on the balance sheet. So Katie will share with you in a little bit about uh, where, we at, where we're at in terms of the continued sales of our buildings. But what I'm happy to say is that not only have we uh, eliminated our debt, which makes us really attractive for a partner, we're also making sure that the future of these buildings and the, the surrounding community remains in, communities, in the community's hands. So while we no longer have uh, a daily need for, these, for this campus and for these buildings, we definitely have identified partners that, that want that, wish to continue to do that. 
So it's not falling into you know, bad hands. There's no developer that's coming in that's gonna bulldoze stuff. Uh, we've already done work to create a condo association that allows for infrastructure services to be shared amongst the buildings. So again, I feel like we've placed the, the building in good hands in terms of the community uh, and where we're going. But overall, right, the state of higher education is very challenged. Uh, we, you know, we continue to see challenges across not just MFA programs, but bachelor's programs, uh, you know, aging populations. So despite some of the negatives, there are actually a lot of positives that VCFA brings to the table, right? The fact that we are low residency allows students to be able to uh, come to us twice a year, either in a winter residency experience or summer resident experience, both those experiences together, um, which means that um, they don't have to necessarily leave their community uh, 100%. But there are some students who can't, and we continue to offer uh, digital only or uh, remote options for students to be able to partake in our classes Many of these students have disabilities. Many of these students are caregivers. Uh, many of these students are required to stay in their community. They're ER doctors. So we continue to serve a, a really uh, wide swath of folks. And another uh, a constituency of groups of students that are beginning co to come back to higher ed and to uh, attain their master's programs are women over the age of 60. Women who have uh, put on hold their own educational careers, for the sake of uh, being able to serve their families and their homes, are now saying to themselves, the kids are out, the husband's good, now it's time for me. So VCFA, is, to me, in my opinion, is, no, is in no better position to be able to do that, but truly the only way that we're, able gonna, that we're going to be able to do that is to, to partner. So um, we are in active discussions with partners, um, some as, as you might think of or consider, but we have already run to Colorado College, We've been to Susquehanna and we continue to talk to others. Um, and obviously this is a deci decision that our board will make in terms of where we go and where we head. But we have a lot of information that we're processing right now in terms of, of what that direction looks like. But I feel really confident But at the end of this process that we will be uh, uh, become a, an affiliate of an institution that will provide us with the necessary services so that VCFA can, can continue to move forward. Um, and that was my commitment that I said during commencement to our students, uh, that the piece of paper that they get with their degrees, uh, with VCFA printed on it, that it will continue to have value and actually grow in value uh, as we continue to go forward. So that's, I think, everything, right, Katie, that, uh, that I wanted, wanted to cover. Um, but you know, in terms of priorities, we're looking at our partnerships, we're looking at the continued sales of our buildings, we're looking at our fundraising, which our fundraising continues to remain strong, and then also to ensure that we have strong enrollment. So I'll take any questions. And if you wouldn't mind using the mic, because we are live streaming. Andrew, it's a pleasure to meet you. Nice I'm meeting you. Joe Castellano, I live over on Sabin Street, so I am within two blocks. Yeah. Just a couple of questions. One of the things that has occurred to me is, obviously, we're in a period of transition here with the campus. I guess one of the things that has come up as a topic of discussion is what's the value proposition with VCFA to students with this new format that you have, and what's your enrollment looking like for the next semester? Yeah, so the value proposition continues to remain strong, which is the, the low residency model, uh, which means that students are not uh, having to go to a physical campus for eight or nine months out of the year. Um, also, the individual approach that we provide to each one of our students and each one of our programs is unlike any other program that I've seen. That customization, that personalization, that support system, that ecosystem that, that they're afforded uh, continues to remain strong. Um, our community is a word of mouth community. It is a very strong word of mouth community. Uh, it's the reason why that many of you are here tonight. Um, many of our students continue to uh, engage in lifelong partnerships with faculty, uh, with staff, and with other students, so we see that as a very valuable thing. Uh, in terms of our enrollment numbers, you know, it is, our enrollment numbers continue to, uh, I would say, uh, trend in the direction that the overall uh, kind of ecosystem of higher ed continues to trend in, in a downward direction. But we're doing very specific things to ensure that um, you know, we don't dip below uh, kind of a threshold number, which would be below 200 students. Um, right now, this semester, we're at about 213.5. We had originally 
uh, budgeted for 243, so that's 30 students less than we anticipated. But I'm happy to say that we've taken no draconian uh, measures. We've not done any layoffs. Uh, we've used actually the proceeds of our buildings, which Katie will talk about in a little bit, to be able to offset some of those losses as well. So there are lots of levers that we continue to play with uh, in terms of the continuation of the repayment of our debt, the use of these of uh, these buildings, including College Hall. You know, we continue to talk about what is the future of College Hall, what is our use of College Hall, and what do we hope that uh, this building will become uh, in terms of the future of the community as well. So every day, it's a constant uh, conversation. We're, we're literally looking at the numbers um, as they come in and to really have a better understand and, and a grasp to be able to really inform the board in terms of where we need to go and where we need to head. Yes, sir. Hi, my name's Phil Dodd from McKinley Street. Uh, thank you so much for coming. This is great. Thank uh, you. You're reaching out to the neighborhood. Uh, I've, you, you touched briefly on, on this building and, and the conversations about what might happen. I wonder if you could speak to that a little bit more, as well as the green, which is uh, you know, a great asset for, for Montpelier. And uh, many of us hope that could be retained in its present form. Yeah. Thanks. I'll let Katie answer that question uh, more directly, but I will say in terms of the, uh, the use of this building in terms of VCFA, we have a very small fo footprint in it currently now. There are tenants uh, that are in the building. I believe Senator Welch is moving in um, as well. So, uh, but again, there, there continues to be a lot of unused space uh, that is not being leveraged. And uh, you know, we have to uh, make a determination uh, in terms of, of how uh, we continue to use this. What I will say, though, is that uh, VCFA, as it currently stands right now, wants to have a long-term commitment to the Montpelier community. One of the things that makes VCFA very attractive, and it goes back to your previous question about the kind of value proposition about our school, is our accreditation. So we are accredited by NECHI, uh, and that accreditation allows us to be able to teach anywhere in the United States. There are some schools that uh, don't have that um, what's called NC Sarah status to be able to do that. Um, so that makes us a very attractive partner. So, um, so yes, but one of those things would be is to continue to maintain our physical presence in the state of Vermont. And obviously we, we, we would wanna continue that physical presence here. So with that, I'm gonna toss it over. I'll come back. I'm gonna toss it over to Katie who will ask some, uh, answer some questions about uh, the continued sales of our campus and I'll be available to answer more questions as well. All right, thank you. Now back to Katie. So I just really wanted to give folks the the play by play in terms of where things stand. Um, so we sold the first building back in mid October to um, an individual who is part of a. Um, uh, health and wellness uh, group. So that's Vermont um, Physical Therapy and they purchased uh, Martin House. Um, and then our second closing was with Greenway Institute. Um, they were leasing Noble um, from us uh, over the summer in the early part of the year, but right at the end of October, um, we closed on Noble and Glover with them. Um, the next building was Crowley, 150 Main Street, who many of you may have met at their um, community meeting with us when they were originally interested in three of our buildings. That um, didn't end up working out for them, but um, they eventually uh, came back around to just purchase Crowley. So again, that's a health and wellness group um, that will be in that building. Um, the new school, one of our long-term tenants in Alumnix and Bishop Hatch, we closed on that um, January 5th. Um, and then our most recent closing, again, was with Greenway for Stone and Schulmeyer, and we closed on that um, January 9th. So we've really made great progress um, in terms of uh, uh, disposing, I don't like that word, but... Um, giving over the assets to other organizations that we feel like, um, you know, it's just a wonderful outcome that so much of this campus is remaining in educational use, that Stone and Schulmeyer, which are and have been um, locations for commercial 
um, tenants for years will continue to be used that way until Greenway gets so big that they might need that space for their programs eventually. Um, and so finally, then uh, we are under contract uh, for Dewey and anticipate a closing um, at the end of March for that building with Greenway. And the only building at this point that's not under contract is Gary Library. And um, I'm really pleased to let folks know that there is a brand new nonprofit um, that is called the Montpelier Performing Arts Hub. Um, that is being spearheaded by Kiana Bromley, who people might know as a wonderful teacher um, at Montpelier High School. Um, she's actually here tonight, and she's going to say a few words about her. She's going to join me up here and, and talk a little bit about. Um, we're really excited um, to, to, you know, again, so much of the campus remaining in educational use. Um, a couple of buildings for health and wellness services, and now this sort of final crown jewel of this possible arts organization. Um, the college is really hoping, we don't have a signed agreement yet, but we're hoping too soon. Um, but we've had many, many visits in terms of looking at the space to see if it's viable. Um, and you know, hope to hope to you know have more concrete news to share in the near future. But this is such a worthwhile um, organization that Kiana and I thought it would be a great time to to introduce her and this idea to the neighbors. So I'm going to turn it over to her for a minute to talk a little bit about that, and then we will come back and answer any additional questions that folks have. Thank you. She's so nice. <laughs> She's so nice to me. Thank you so much. Um, I am really excited to be here. It's a little last minute, so I, I quickly tried to get myself um, prepared, but I am just really excited. It's been really lovely just to um, work with the college. I this has been It's rather new, this journey, but it isn't a new journey for me. I have been looking for a space to expand the performing arts opportunities here in central Vermont. Um, I am a performing artist myself. I teach performing arts. Um, I have kids in the district. I work with all sorts of people. I've been doing um, community theater with other adults, and I sing, and, and I am always looking for more ways um, to do that, and I have found that there's room and space and that there's a lot of opportunity. Um, and so one of the things that I have been looking for is a space to open a, a professional black box theater that is um, fully equipped with ready-to-go professional lighting and sound um, and so that the space uh, it can be used by a multitude of people and performing arts groups and companies in the area to come host the event that fits in that space. Um, and it's kind of a niche size. So if you've been into the Gary Library, it's absolutely gorgeous. It has beautiful architecture. And the space is, I mean, I walked in, Katie brought me in, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's already here. I just, we just need a little, we need a little change of scenery, and, and, and the performing arts space is here. So if you walk in, you imagine there's a big, open, beautiful, tall ceiling room um, already there that would become a professional black box theater space, um, which would mean, what I mean by black box theater is it's, it's flexible, that there's no permanent seating, and that it can be rearranged, and that seats can be moved to the needs of the different groups that are hoping to bring something to that space, whether it's an event or a performance um, or production. And the basement, my actual, my favorite part of the building actually is the basement. Um, and I always say that I love the theater, but I see theaters all the time, so I'm like a little disenchanted. But the basement has this amazing space that I am hoping and that we're hoping the nonprofit to turn into an educational suite with studios for um, rehearsals and um, spaces to practice and to host classes in for all ages. Um, there's the way that we're looking at the space right now would be three classroom spaces and then a waiting room um, for people as they're getting ready for classes. Um, and so we're looking at that. We have Freeman French Freeman in Burlington, which is an architect firm. They're helping us look at the space. Um, and we have so many wonderful people that are already starting to be involved, but we're very new and we're, we're looking to find others that are very excited about this idea too and want to partner. Um, and the space really is meant to it's not a company that produces uh, performances necessarily in that space, but primarily it is a professionally managed um, performance space that is going to work with local partners. Lo like we really want to embrace the local talent here and have a space for them to grow and develop skills and work with high quality equipment and get that experience 
for youth and for um, performers like me who would love to perform in a space like that with a, a size audience that matches a lot of our community's needs um, and our size. So I'm really excited. I don't know if I mentioned everything I was supposed to, but you're, feel free to reach out to me um, and I will leave things and, and I have an email address and you can people those that are on the live stream if you're welcome to reach out and ask questions and and um, yeah thank you I don't know if I got everything but <laughs> okay thank you yeah. oh, oh I'm so sorry we never said the name uh, Ma, well we met Montpelier Performing Arts Hub um, and you can find me at Kiana at mpa-hub.org So really, we'll take some Q&A of any of us if, if there are any um, remaining questions. Susan. Hi. Hi. I'm Sue Labarth. Um, I live right behind Dewey Hall. Oh, for, I don't know, 36 or 37 years. But um, my knowledge of the college uh, and the campus goes back to 1960 when two of my high school classmates attended the junior college here. So um, I have some sadness. Um, change is hard for all of us. Um, but out of that arises a question as to uh, do you maintain any contact or continuity with alumni groups going back through Vermont College when it was part of Norwich, uh, the previous junior college, uh, whatever other iterations there might be? Do you have any relationship with those folks, uh, input or donations or concern of any kind, just question. Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, we do have, mm -hmm. um, I think it typically comes by way of Norwich and when they have reunion classes come in, they will sometimes contact us and have groups that were here on this campus. Um, I also think there's an even sort of further back version before this campus was associated with Norwich. And Sarah Hooker, who's a longtime VCFA employee, um, has had regular contact with folks from as far back um, as the, the junior college. And folks will come through and do a tour. Um, it's probably been two years. I don't know if we did one last year, but we, we regularly have groups or individuals come through and tour and just sort of see the, you know, the place where they were all those years ago. Yes. So you were talking about partnering with other educational institutions, and I would just like to know a little bit more about your vision whether you will retain um, or you will be a graduate uh, type of college or if you'll do undergrad as well, and will you stay with the arts? Uh, we're gonna start a pickleball team. No, we're not doing that. Um, no, our goal is obviously to continue to maintain our six programs uh, and that our programs partner with that, with that uh, uh, partner institution. Um, there are lots of different models that we're looking at and, and what we're discussing, but um, the goal is is to really land the institution with another partner to be able to provide us the support services that we need to be able to continue. Um, and again, some of them are, I mean, they're all within the educational space uh, that we're, we're, we're talking to. There's not a lot more specificity that I can really provide. Um, and we won't make any formal announcements about a partner institution until we get to what's called a definitive agreement. Uh, that is an agreement where both parties have agreed uh, to specific stipulations. We've all done our due diligence from both sides, and it pretty much is a, a, a close to as a done deal as possible pending uh, accreditation approval. So our accreditor is Detchi, and depending on the partner institution, they have their accreditor as well too. Um, our creditors will work together to ensure that we are serving the best interests of students because that really is what accreditors are about is, is protecting students and their investments. Um, but you know, it's, the goal is to maintain VCFA. Um, 
Obviously, when we talk to partner institutions, there are opportunities for pipeline. Many of our students who come to VCFA come to get what's called their badge, which is to become teachers. So, you know, being able to go to a school that has potentially a BFA program already in place would allow them to become teaching assistants. So again, we're trying to look at ways in which we can expand um, a lot of our services to our students and to be uh, to prepare them for the for the world, you know, the modern world. Everything from artificial intelligence to um, you know robotics and everything in between, and in all of our different disciplines. But um, that you know that is the goal, and and where that goes from there, honestly, is is kind of the sky's the limit, and it really depends on who that partner is. Yeah. You're hired, Sue, so you're hired. Yeah, I can. Yeah, no. So the the future of the continuation of VCFA uh, in terms of its ownership of this building continues to be something that we look at on a almost daily basis in terms of our actual use of the building, and then in terms of uh, our need to maintain what's called an, you know again our accreditation with Netchi. So I'm really not. It's something that the board will consider and take into consideration as to how we use this building, but. Our goal would be in, a, in an ideal scenario that we continue to maintain a presence here in this building, whether or not we are the actual owner of this building, I think is, is completely up for discussion. Got it. Yep. I think, oh, now it's working. And the um, green, can you talk about the green? Because yes, I think that's an important I would thing, second, like preserving that, because I know yeah. that means a lot to, to this community, and I can't answer that. Katie can. Yeah, so right now I would say the most recent update about the green is that the condo association, those owners have a, a recreation easement on the green. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we're really looking at it as a community resource. Um, as I think most folks know, Onion River Soccer uses it regularly. Um, and, you know, we, we haven't done anything um, to do anything different, right? Like it's, it's there and um, both new, well, I guess it's all the owners of the condo association will have that um, recreation easement to the, to the green. So is, is that a long-term protection of the green or is it something that we as a community could help support that protection, which I, I think many of us are concerned about sure i mean it's know, keeping written, it open yeah in it's some written way. into the condo association like founding documents so mm -hmm. i unless the condo association mm -hmm. decided to undo that somehow it's you know that's i think the best that we can say is a forever arrangement mm-hmm Sure. I mean, so Greenway, again, is a college. So they, in terms of their future needs, will need it as their school grows. And I think in the meantime, and I don't mean to like speak for them, but my understanding is they're really interested in looking at, at, the, in that, at that building in a way to do it a little bit different than the sort of way the old school dormitory spaces were set up so that it's a little more flexible, that it could be used for um, workforce housing. So people that are interested in efficiency units, whether it's their students or, um, you know, people in the surrounding community that need sort of a, a um, not maybe not a whole house or even a whole apartment, but are interested in efficiency living. So again, that's not VCFA's uh, 
project, so I'm hesitant to say much more than that, but that is what I understand their vision is for that building long term. Yeah. Yeah, we can repeat sure. the question. Yeah. Yes. That was an oversight if I didn't mention New School purchased both Alumnix Hall and Bishop Hatch. Yeah. Yep. You don't have to get up now because the microphone's dead, so we'll just repeat your question. And we forgot to repeat your I question. I forgot. Yeah. The question was, what about Alumnix Hall? And I either forgot to mention it when I was going through the list of buildings that had sold, um, and it has, in fact, sold to the New School. Hello. Um, it's on my list. Let's just put it that way. It's on my list. And that and before we move any further forward, because again, we're not in an official spot or anything. Unfortunately, you know, it's, it's headed that direction. And that's what we're here for. Um, but that is on the list of the next um, stages. But absolutely, I concur. There you go. There you go. Any other questions? They do know about us, though. No other questions? Hi, I'm Phyllis Rubenstein on College Street, and I thank you for this opportunity to meet with, with both of you. Um, I was wondering if you know whether any of the buyers intend to request changes in, in the, the neighborhood, like the need for additional parking, because at one point there was uh, some talk about additional parking around the green, and is any of that going to have to go forward? Not right now. I mean, certainly that could be something down the road, but nothing in the works at the moment related to changes to the parking. My second question has to do with the green, and, and you did explain, Katie, that the recreation assessment is for the condo owners. So what is the sense of the community's uh, uh, access to the green? I mean, I think we all know, those of us who have lived here, we essentially use it as a public park. Um, it's not technically, it is, you know, the college's property, but we're really happy to work with, uh, whether it's the farmer's market or whether it's Onion River soccer or people who call up and, you know, wanna have, oh, there was something just recently, there are some legislators staying and they wanna have a meteor watching party you know, we really are here to facilitate, you know, the, the uses that people um, want to, within reason, um, use it for. So um, I think we, we have tried really hard to maintain it as, you know, one of our assets, but sharing it um, really willingly with, with people in the community. Thank you. 
Yeah, I would, I would, I would say that um, having grown up in New York City, I now live in Arizona, but, but coming here and seeing how the space gets used, everything from, you know, what is it like that outdoor igloo hut that was being built and, you know, people walking their dogs and, and clearly, you know, for as long as VCFA continues to uh, own this building and own the green, we want it to be in the community's hands. And what I would say to you all is, you know, at any point at which uh, if something were to change in terms of the ownership of, of this space in this building, that the community remain completely involved and engaged, right? And I would definitely say that part of our due diligence in talking to uh, an owner, future owner, is how do you intend to use the space and how will you be able to share that and explain that to the community who, you know, finds this space so beloved, right? So it's, I will say, the person who is doing that has been Katie. Katie has been stewarding this entire real estate process um, on top of her day job, right, of running the school as our, our CFO, uh, HR, Title IX. She also wears the hat of real estate agent, um, and she has done a really phenomenal job. So I really want to thank Katie for her leadership and her commitment to this community because it has been a very hard job uh, to be able to continue to do this work under duress, uh, trying to focus on the future while also keeping focus on the present and also trying to honor and celebrate the past of this community and what this community has meant. And again, as someone who has herself grown up here and danced on this stage, I'm sure she would want nothing more to, to make sure that, that this uh, campus falls into the right hands. And I would say thus far, Katie Gustafson, you've done an amazing job in doing that. So thank you. Um, so I'm actually here the rest of the week um, uh, in my official capacity as interim president. So if I see you out there, wave at me. Uh, please don't throw any lemons. I would appreciate that if you didn't do that. But uh, it truly means a, a lot for the community to come out. And as I've said with, with everyone, that, everyone that I've spoken to, my door, either virtual or real, is open. My email address is andrew.ramsamy at vcfa.edu. Um, students, faculty, staff, community members, alumni, anyone can reach out and ask any question. I will do the best to my ability to answer that question as best and as transparently as I can. Um, and then as we continue to move forward with our, with our partnership plan, our goal is to continue to, uh, to be open and transparent with all of our constituents. So again, um, there, there's nothing, there's no question that you can't ask me. And if there's anything that you wanted to ask me tonight, but you feel like it's more of a private conversation, I'd be more than willing to have that conversation with you. And please let folks know in the community that when they hear anything that seems like rumor or speculation, that if they didn't hear it from us officially, it's in all likelihood not true. Um, so, you know, I know it's been really hard the last couple of months and, and certainly, uh, you know, post announcement to see, uh, you know, stuff that has been posted and, sh and shared about VCFA that is really not true. Um, and my hope is in the spirit of being open and transparent that we can uh, begin to tamp down some of that rumor and speculation uh, stuff that happens out there. So again, thank you for coming tonight. I truly appreciate all of your support. And if there's anything that we can do, uh, please let us know. But uh, have a safe walk home for most of you. Thank you.